in the 1990s, I lived in Vienna and uh, in Austria, the new right was emerging in the 1990s. The FPÖ, the uh, very far right wing party that in media sometimes called Freedom Party, but has nothing to do with freedom, uh, won election after election. And in addition, they moved the entire discourse to the right. And then finally, in the year 2000, uh, Austria had the first uh, government with a right-wing party uh, in the government in the European Union. As we know, uh, a few years afterwards, uh, many other countries followed, but uh, in this case, Austria was kind of the sad avant-garde. And uh, I did works uh, focusing on um, new right uh, extremism on how something like the nation or the homeland is being uh, constituted. And I was also focusing on this newly established institution of detention centers for migrants and for refugees. And, I, and that was probably the most well-known project I established together with the artist Martin Kren. Um, uh, cube three by three by three meter uh, which was um, located next to the Vienna State Opera so in the very city center where thousands of tourists uh, and people cross uh, every hour and this referred to these uh, newly established detention centers for migrants as a form of institutionalized racism. The European Union is part of the problems, it's not a solution of the problems. So the Schengen Agreement is a central problem why migrants, why refugees are forced uh, to uh, find other ways of how to enter the European Union than just uh, applying for a visa or, or taking a plane. The ten thousands of people who have been drowning in the Mediterranean Sea is a result of the politics of the European Union. Therefore, in my uh, political and artistic work, the European Union uh, will be always regarded as a target. Borders in general are a tool uh, to calibrate uh, uh, different forms of movement, different forms of movement for people, different forms of movement for capital, different forms of movement for services. And uh, borders also create different forms of uh, people who are allowed to cross or who are not allowed to cross. Uh, so as uh, a person with uh, a European passport, uh, the borders uh, do not play a big role and they do not limit a lot uh, our movement. But for those of us who haven't got the European passports, uh, it's, uh, it, is very, it is something very essential that uh, really makes a decision if you can uh, move to another country or not uh, move to another country. But on the other hand, I think also the border regime is less rigid than it appears from the, from the outside. As long as there are people who have the will to enter the European Union, they will always find a way, no matter how high fences are and how far this fortification of the European Union uh, proceeds in the, in, in the future. Therefore, I, I think uh, in, in mainstream media we very often hear this term of a refugee crisis, but we have no refugee crisis, but we have a crisis of uh, this uh, concept of migration from the side of the European uh, Union. And I think we can only find a problem for the situation through changing the politics within the European Union. In the year 2015, we experienced uh, probably the largest influx of refugees that was not kind of uh, accepted uh, by the European nation states, but where the power just came from the refugees and hundreds of thousands of people managed to overcome this rigid uh, Schengen system and to enter the European Union in this so-called summer of uh, migration. This was just a powerful uh, act of refugees who decided to become protagonists of their own destiny. And if they would have waited for the European states to open their borders, they would still be uh, locked behind the Austrian-Hungarian border. 
And therefore, I think this is really a fantastic example that shows how people with a very articulated will and the intention to act are um, physical able to overcome borders. But as we also know, this so-called uh, summer of migration also led to much, uh, uh, much harsher uh, introduction of this uh, rigid border regime from the side of the European borders. And now we still have border controls between uh, several European states and the entire um, uh, uh, discourse, I think, in the uh, European Union uh, shifted towards the right and uh, right-wing parties entered, uh, the, entered several parliaments. So um, there are also some uh, quite negative effects, but for this, of course, not uh, refugees can be blamed. I'm completely convinced that it is possible to construct uh, an uh, institution where um, people who are at the moment based within the European Union uh, find themselves together and uh, that institutions can be established which are functioning in a democratic manner that inc include all of us, uh, also people who are not allowed to participate in elections nowadays. And I'm a big believer in that people are able to self-organize uh, themselves. Uh, and there are examples uh, that self-organization can be very successful. I mean, there are worker-controlled factories, uh, there are autonomous zones within, even within the European Union where people just organize their lives themselves without any state, without any police, without any uh, kind of uh, intervention. Um, so I think when uh, we take away this uh, power of the nation states also to crush this diversity and these alternatives, then I think uh, there's the possibility to develop some really exciting things.